My name is Wong Yu Zhao, and uh, I'm from Australian National University. So I'm very excited here to discuss our new garbage collector, LXR, which has a great advantage over the prior work. And uh, this is a joint work with Steve Blackburn from Google and Australian National University and uh, Catherine McKaylin from Google. So in general, in this talk, I'll discuss why low latency high throughput GC is important, why the design of production Java GC is intrinsically flawed in a way that no uh, engineering work is able to fix. And I also discuss how our LXR's design addresses these fundamental issues. So imagine we have an interactive text search server. The user keeps sending the server text search requests and the server keeps sending back responses. If the server is written in Java, for example, Lucene, what if a garbage collection happens when the server is still processing the request? Well, the user will get a delayed response with a higher latency. You are not the only user. Typically, the server receives multiple requests from multiple sources at a time. So if the server is blocked by a garbage collection, not only the running requests will be affected, but as new requests arrive, they will all be blocked and queued up, and the latency for these requests will all increase. So this is the main reason why most of the modern garbage collectors start to optimize for pause time. Let's do a quick overview here. G1 is the default garbage collector in OpenJDK, and it is designed for optimizing pause time. It has four high-level key features, tracing region-based, evacuation only, and uh, stop the word evacuation. For this stop the words region-based evacuation, G1 performs pauses and uh, copies live objects in the fragmented regions and move them to the reserved empty regions. And uh, after G1, latest garbage collectors further reduces pause time by performing more concurrent jobs. C4, Shenandoah, and ZGC, although they are implemented differently, they all share the key high-level key features. So they all perform tracing, region-based, and uh, evacuation only. If we take Shenandoah and compare with G1, the only major difference is that Shenandoah performs concurrent evacuation instead of doing it in the pause. Unfortunately, for these modern low pulse collectors, their long-running concurrent GC threads consume substantial processors. This reduces server throughput limits the rate it can process requests, and uh, eventually leads to significant latency. This shows that poor throughputs will lead to poor latency. And this is also the main reason why our LXR focuses on both throughputs and the latency. This is a pause time curve for G1 and Shenandoah. We show a research result because this is a widely used application and uh, also high, very high demanding application. And it has very high allocation rate and imposes a great burden to the garbage collectors. So in the graph, the x-axis is the percentile of the pauses and the y-axis is the pause time in milliseconds. So as you can see, Shenandoah has much lower pause time than G1. Well, this is the latency graph. Different to the pause time graph here and also throughout the remainder of the talk, we will show latency user actually experiences instead of the pause time. So it is super striking that although Shenandoah has ultra low pause time, it has much, much higher latency than G1. Also, for concurrent copying collectors like Shenandoah, they consume extra resource for concurrent collection. So the only thing you can do to improve its latency is to trade time for space. So here we show that if we assign Shenandoah with 10 small memory, it is now able to match G1's latency on a much smaller heap. However, our objective to LXR is that we'll have better latency than both G1 and Shenandoah, and also we'll have competitive throughputs to the two collectors. And uh, so to achieve high, high, high throughput and low latency, we'll address six different challenges listed here. And uh, among all these challenges, it turns out immediacy and avoiding copying are really hard problems to solve. So let's dig in. The first problem is, is immediacy. The traditional tracing collectors cannot reclaim objects timely. For a tracing collector to reclaim memory, it has to apply a transitive closure starting from the root pointers and recursively mark all the live objects in the heap. So this has a few issues. One is that it, it cannot reclaim anything before everything has been traced. The other problem is that parallelism of tracing highly depends on the shape of the heap. 
So this makes tracing intrinsically slow to reclaim. However, XR solves this issue by using reference counting algorithm. So, and uh, the naive reference counting 9060 simply tracks each pointer update, applies the decrements to the overwritten object and an increment to the new object. It also reclaims objects with zero reference counts. However, this has totally different issues. One is that it has sickly garbage issue, and also it has high mutator overhead because you have to apply two atomic operations for each point update. IXR solves the mutator overhead issue by introducing temporal causing step-by-step. We first adapt the deferral RC optimization in 1976, and then we adapt the coalescing RC in 2001. This is, this is actually the most important and also interesting optimization. It observes that if a field is updated multiple times, all the intermediate pluses and minuses, they can all actually be canceled out. So what RC really cares is the first overwritten object and uh, the latest target object. And so we also apply the implicitly dead optimization in 2012. So with these three, as well as the other minor optimizations, we are able to completely remove the material overhead problem and leaving the sickly garbage being the only issue. And uh, with RC and uh, its timely reclamation, this will bring us high performance. The second problem is the dependence on copying. Most of the modern garbage collectors reclaim memory only by performing evacuation. So this has a few issues. First, for coherency, if you move objects, you have to update all the pointers pointing to these objects. And also copying itself consumes large memory traffic. And for most of the collectors, you have to have a large copy reserve to fit the worst case survival ratio. So these reasons makes evacuation intrinsically expensive. And even worse, for a low cost collector that also performs strictly evacuation, it has no choice but only perform concurrent copying because copying is, is expensive and you can't do all the copying jobs totally in the pods. Well, AXR solves this issue by using MX heap with recycling and optimistic copy. The MX heap divides the heap into blocks and blocks are further divided into smaller lines. As an example, starting from the upper graph, MX to, to evacuate fragmented objects, MX will perform a transitive closure starting from the root pointer. So it will forward the first object pointed by the root pointer to a recycled line. And uh, the next two objects will be skipped because they are not in the evacuation set. And also the last object will also be copied to the recycled line. So with this recycling, Emix can use the recycle lines for allocation so that it don't need a large or even any copy reserve. And with opportunistic copying, such evacuation process can be stopped at any time as long as some certain time or space constraint is met. So this is how we perform judicious targeted and uh, stop the word copying so that we don't need to perform any concurrent copying. Okay, so now let's discuss some other high-level design of LXR. LXR is designed to achieve high throughput and low latency. We've already shown that how immediacy and avoiding copying using MX heap helps with throughput. Now let's skip the next topic and to discuss how short pauses, defragmentation, and the concurrent marking helps with latency. Imagine we have a multi-threaded application running. A traditional stop the word tracing collector would perform periodic and lengthy pauses to interrupt the, the mutators and uh, perform all the marking, evacuation, and uh, reclamation jobs totally in the pause. This makes the pause generally large and expensive. On the other hand, concurrent copying collectors tend to make the pause as short as possible. But actually, the amount of GC work is increased. It has to shift this GC work from the pauses to these long-running concurrent GC threads. And it is obvious here that this concurrent GC threads consumes computation resource and will eventually slow down the application. However, LXR chooses to perform regular brief and high effective policies. Because we have opportunistic copying, so we can perform all our limited copying jobs totally in the pause. This will make the pause time slightly larger than the concurrent copying collectors. But by doing so, we only need to perform occasional concurrent marking, 
a part of reference counting jobs and reclamation work in concurrent so that we don't have to consume too much uh, computation resource that should be assigned to the application threads. Alexa also performs incremental defragmentation. Well, the problem for this is that moving objects requires a sort of global knowledge to track and update all the pointers pointing to the moved objects. However, reference counting is intrinsically a local optimization, oh, sorry, a local operation. Where well, Sherry are exploited that such complete knowledge can actually be achieved either when copying during the first RC after an object is born or copying during a stop the world for heap trace. The second is no longer an option to us because we, want, we don't want to do the tracing in the past, but we still adapt to the first option. We also have new observation that we can actually add remembered sets to RC. This is actually the most important optimization for us to be able to move objects with reference counting. So in general, we group image blocks into contiguous regions. And uh, by remembering those cross region pointers, we are able to evacuate the regions without perform any tracing. And uh, Alexa also performs concurrent marking to solve the sickly garbage issue. We use the snapshot at the beginning algorithm. The intuition is simple, garbage is stable. So SATB will perform will build a snapshot of the heap at the start of the marking and performs the marking on the snapshot. Because the mutators can also update in the heap. So before each pointer store, you have to catch and uh, check each overwritten object properly. And uh, our implementation is also simple. We adapt the observation from Azachi and Pentrick that SATB barrier can actually be folded into coalescing RC red barrier. And uh, we also have to solve other complications such as RC will deleting objects during concurrent marking. And uh, so far we've discussed five of the high level design decisions. Now let's discuss one more important low level implementation detail. For the implementation, Alexa actually introduced plenty of innovations that could be discussed. We've already covered the first two. Unfortunately, time only allows us to discuss one more. The red barrier. So in general, coalescing RC, SATB, and remember set maintenance in Alexa are all built using one single low overhead and high precision red barrier. Let's take Java's put field instruction as an example. The instruction simply stores the value object to the location of the field. Our barrier only cares the first modification of the field and uh, the slow pass pushes the old object, I mean the overwritten object to the deck buffer and the location of the field to the modified buffer. And it turns out this is all we need for our implementation. For coalescing RC, we scan the fields in the modified buffer and uh, load the target objects and apply increments. And we also apply decrements to the objects in the deck buffer. For concurrent marking, we simply mark and scan the objects in the deck buffer. For remember set maintenance, we scan the fields in the modified buffer and remember those pointing to the evacuation set. And this is how we build three semantics using one low overhead right barrier. And the overhead is only 1.6%. Okay, let's show how XR performs. So we did our implementation on JDK 11 which was the LTS at the time of our development. And uh, we also use MTK for our development. And uh, for the evaluation, we use the couple benchmark suite and comparing with three different production garbage collectors in OpenJDK. And uh, we did our evaluation on multiple platforms. The results are similar. So here in this talk, I'll just show the MD Zen3 results. So this is the same latency graph as shown before. Note that we did not report ZGC results for every search because every search uses relatively small heap size and cannot run with ZGC. And uh, this is the same graph with RxR results. As you can see, RxR has much lower latency than both G1 and Shenandoah for 99.99% of the requests. And uh, these are the other three latency-sensitive benchmarks in the couple benchmark suite. 
These are all widely used applications and to represent diverse types of the workloads. And uh, we also, same as a research, we don't report the GC results for Tomcat because it also uses relatively small heap size. So from the graph, RxR has much better latency than all the other collectors for most of the cases, especially for Cassandra and the Tomcat. And we don't just care about latency. For the other benchmarks, we also report the throughput results. So this is the throughput data normalized to G1's total running time. For Shenandoah and ZGC, because they use concurrent copying and uh, introducing heavy read barriers, so they generally have lower throughputs than G1. However, our XI is slightly 4% better in throughput than G1. And uh, because GC is fundamentally a time-space trade-off, so here we also measured sensitivity across different heap sizes, ranging from 1.3x of the minimum runnable heap to 6x. So first, for latency, RxI is much better than all the other collectors for all the heap sizes. And uh, for throughput, RxI is also same or slightly better than the other collectors. So the conclusion is that existing low pulse collectors do not deliver low latency because the lack of immediacy, the dependence on copying, and the low throughput. These are all fundamental design problems to the collectors, and these cannot be solved simply by introducing like, or applying extra engineering effort. And we also introduce RxR that focuses on latency instead of the pause time. We perform stop the word judicious copying as well as other key innovations such as RC remembered sets. And uh, we also demonstrate the ability for AXR to achieve high throughput and low latency. Thank you for your attention.